With 2019 coming to an end, I wanted to make a special video. Since this year was by far the best year for my channel, finally reaching 1,000 subscribers, let alone 10,000. Just incredible. I had originally planned for this video to come out for my 1k subscriber special, but I decided to put this off until the end of the year. So today, I'll be counting down my top 10 favorite games of all time. Now these are just my personal opinions, and a few of these are mainly based off of nostalgia and memories I've had with the game. But with that being said, let's count down my top 10 favorite games of all time. Also, spoilers for any game I talk about here. Majora's Mask is my favorite Zelda game. Now, as a game, I actually think Breath of the Wild is better, but to me, I've always loved Majora's Mask. In fact, it's actually the only Zelda game I've beaten out of the eight that I own. My playthrough of this game came in the form of the 3DS version, which I've heard mixed opinions on if it's better or not, but it was a lot of fun from my experience. My favorite parts about Majora's Masks are collecting the masks themselves and the stories. So first, let's cover the masks. These are such perfect collectibles for a Zelda game, and are so fun to switch around. Some highlights are the transformation masks, which allow you to turn into a Deku, Zora, or Goron, and the bunny hood, which allows Link to run faster. And of course, the story and the time travel mechanics. It's pretty dark, and the fact that everything you do basically gets reset upon time traveling is pretty sad. The game gets you invested in this world and the characters, and even if you help them through their many problems, in the end, you'll have to reset. One of my favorite memories from this game actually comes from the time travel mechanic. In the Great Bay Temple, I was running out of time fast, and it made the boss fight that much more intense, finishing with only about 20 seconds left until the moon crashed into Termina. I also really love Skull Kid, as he, to my knowledge, is one of the very few Zelda villains to actually be redeemed in the end, and his story does make sense. In fact, I love pretty much all the characters in this game. This is by far my favorite rendition of Link, and the people like the Happy Mask Salesman really help to sell this world. That's one of the reasons I play Young Link at Smash, just because I really love Majora's Mask. I know I probably didn't do a great job of explaining why I love this game, but still, I think it's just incredible. Going from my favorite Zelda game into my favorite Pokemon game, now, I know a lot of people don't like Pokemon X much. Well, kinda seems like that for every Pokemon game, but that's besides the point. I used to be pretty obsessed with Pokemon back then, and used to play this game constantly. My team, or at least my main four, were Raichu, Sylveon, Greninja, and Charizard. Each of which are now my top four favorite Pokemon. I did enjoy the battling, but my other main enjoyment came from catching all, at the time, 721 Pokemon to complete my Pokedex. I love finding out where all of them were, using the GTS, trading, and leveling them all up. In fact, I even have a super old, unlisted video of me completing the Pokédex. Now, you think- OH! IT'S GOT A CROWN! LOOK AT THAT! OH MY GOD- Damn! Since Pokémon X, no other Pokémon game has really done it for me, and with the decks being limited to only around half in Sword and Shield, it doesn't have as much content for me to personally enjoy. But ignoring the new games, I love my journey here battling, training, and catching them all. Some of my favorite memories are getting my Sylveon for the first time, which was extra special since I didn't actually know how to get one at the time, and getting a shiny Shaman from Wonder Trading, which helped me get other mythical Pokemon for my decks. I don't think any Pokemon game is going to top this one anytime soon, especially if they keep cutting Pokemon. If the new Pokemon game comes to the Switch with every Pokemon, or at least more Pokemon than there was in X, then maybe it might even be better. But as of now, it seems like Pokemon X is going to be my favorite. Okay, I'll admit, this one is probably just pure nostalgia. New Super Mario Bros. Wii was really my first, or at least one of my first, introductions into the Mario series. And as you'll see later in the list, I really love the Mario series. This game is just an all-around fun time. It's simple, sure, but not everything has to be huge, and this game has so many memorable moments. Levels like 9-7, and of course the final Bowser fight, which to this day is still actually my favorite Bowser fight in the series. I used to play this game a lot with my family, and even after we'd beaten everything we could, we still played it, inventing new challenges like Racing to the Flag, basically an older version of what we have now in Mario Maker 2. I actually used to speedrun this game a bit, 
Granted, I wasn't the best, and I didn't run it for long, but I'm still satisfied with my time of 27 minutes. This game also introduced the propeller suit and the ice flower, which are, in my opinion, two of the best power-ups in the entire series. Okay, technically the ice flower was in Mario Galaxy, but the way it's used here is much better. This game is just a super fun Mario adventure with so many memorable moments and levels that I had to put it at least at the number 8 spot. Now this next spot is a tie between Mario 64 and its remake on the DS. I feel like both have strengths and weaknesses that balance each other out and make each other practically equal in the rankings. This game started my love for 3D collectathon Mario games. Each of these levels in these games are iconic and fun to roam around in. The only real level I don't like is Rainbow Ride, but the rest of them are absolutely incredible. I've 100 percented both of these games, and was even obsessed with the DS version, trying to beat it in as little B presses as possible, of course being inspired by Pan & Koek's challenge on the original game. In fact, the reason I got Mario 64 was because of one of my favorite YouTubers, Nathaniel Bandy, and I'm super happy I did. Also, funny story about that, I've been on his channel since he uploaded the Top 15 Hardest Stars video, and as many of you may know, that list is pretty infamous for being quite bad. But anyways, when I got the game, I collected Blast Away the Wall, which was one of his hardest stars, and I was so proud of myself, despite this actually being a pretty easy star to get. But back to the game itself, nearly every star in mission were a blast to complete. The DS version was also nice as it added three new characters with their own abilities, and even more stars to collect. Again, even after beating this game, I kept coming back. I tried to collect every coin in each stage in the original game, and I was actually able to go through most of them. I think the only one I didn't do was Tiny Huge Island, due to the impossible coin. But this game started my love for exploring huge Mario worlds and collecting stars, and coming up with my own ways to play, even when I've already beaten the game. So for that, these two games have to take the number 7 spot. Animal Crossing is such an underrated franchise. Or at least that's what I would have said because I didn't know how big the Animal Crossing community actually was until the Switch released. But either way, Animal Crossing, specifically New Leaf, is such a fun time sync game. The segment will likely be super short as it's pretty infamous that Animal Crossing is very hard to explain why it's fun. It's just a very relaxing game and it's fun to just hang out around your town, go fishing, maybe work on designing your home, helping out some villagers, and so much more. The game just gives so much control to the player as to what they can do at any moment. With New Horizons on the way, I'm really excited to be able to play on the big screen. Like I said, this section is short. I highly recommend giving Animal Crossing a try to see why it's fun. Oh boy, onto the third Mario game of this video. This one though, isn't a platformer, but instead, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Mario Kart is always a fun game to play with friends and family, and this is by far the best in the franchise in my opinion. The tracks in the game are phenomenal like Electrodrome, Cloudtrop Cruise, and my personal favorite Mario Kart track, Mount Wario. This game's controls are perfect, and going around the tracks is so satisfying. The items and such in this game are also great. The new items like the Soundhorn do a great job of balancing things and making things overall much more fun. This game's main mechanic is anti-gravity, which really goes to mix up some of the tracks and makes them more fun. Like for example, you can ride down a waterfall in Shy Guy Falls, or even on some of the more basic tracks like Mario Circuit GBA, there are given more anti-gravity sections to make them more fun and memorable. This game also has the best roster in the franchise. But that doesn't really matter since I'll only ever play as Dry Bones anyways. Speaking of which, this is a remake of the Wii U entry, bringing back all of the DLC for free and adding in new items and characters like the legendary Dry Bones. But while racing is my main fun of Mario Kart, we absolutely cannot talk about this game without talking about the incredible battle mode. In the Wii U version, it was, to say the least, the worst battle mode in the franchise. However, now it may be just as fun, if not more fun, than the racing itself. I haven't had this much fun with battle mode since the DS entry. There are five battle modes here. The worst is by far Coin Runners, where the player with the most coins at the end wins. The other four, though, are all great. Shine Thief is where the player has to hold onto the shine for 20 seconds, and it's super hectic and fun. The classic balloon battle is here, along with another version of it with the bomb battle, where you can only get the bombs, which is also super fun. And finally, the new mode, which is my friends and I's favorite, Renegade Roundup. This game mode has one team of cops, and they have to try to cage the renegades, and this is so fun with a group of friends. I like being the renegades more, but being the cop team can be fun as well. 
This Mario Kart entry is definitely the best in the franchise due to it having the most fun content and dry bones. Well, I'm sure you all expected this game to show up somewhere on the list. Super Mario Maker 2 is such a great game. This game provides an endless amount of content to toy around with, and for someone who grew up playing Mario 2D games, was a dream and still is a dream come true. The original back on the Wii U was actually the first video game I ever got on the first day it's released. That's how much I love this series. Mario Maker 2, with its simple mechanics and interface, allows for anyone to make levels. For better or for worse. It's so amazing to see all the creative ideas the community comes up with, and of course it's fun to come up with them myself. This game is so much content that for me, it's stayed fresh since the first time I've played it. I've got around 425 hours in this game, and yet it's still so fun. This is of course a sequel to the original, so I added in so many new things like slopes and new level themes, which make it seem so much more fun and makes it look much more fresh every time you play. My personal favorite type of levels are traditional levels, but I have fun in nearly all level types. Making and playtesting levels is so fun, as you get to use and come up with so many new ideas, and while some may not work out, they're always fun to mess around with. Since this game has so many possibilities, it allows me to come up with videos for you guys, which I really enjoy doing, and that's also one of the reasons I love this game so much. I barely even scratched the surface with this game here, and all the different types of levels you can create, and even some of the modes. This game has a story mode, which was a very good addition as it helps get the player some new ideas for their own levels, even though it's a bit sad that there are a few story mode exclusive items here. There's also an online versus mode and co-op mode, which is pretty fun but frustrating at the same time. Still though, it's endlessly entertaining. My favorite ways to play though are definitely coming up with my own levels and playing some other people's online. This game is one of the very few near-perfect sequels to a game that makes the original obsolete. However, it's certainly not the only one, as we'll see with the next spot. But this game has endless content and creative opportunities that I can't see getting anything less than the number 4 spot on this list. Also, this has dry bones, so... Super Smash Bros. Ultimate is peak Super Smash Bros. I'm nearly 100% sure of that. The gameplay in this entry is much more fun and satisfying than any other entry before, with everything feeling quick, but not too quick where it's too hard to play. The bonus modes like Classic are way better than before, where it's based off each character specifically playing it. Smashdown and Squad Strike modes are also great ways to mix things up with friends. The battle arenas are also a great help with making matches easier to get together with friends or others online. Alright, I think it's enough talking about the other things in this game, let's talk about the main parts. The sheer amount of franchises in this game. I mean, look at this character selection screen. It's full of gaming icons and Fire Emblem too. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. But yeah, this game includes every fighter in Smash Bros. history, no matter how much of an odd choice they may have been. This game has over 70 characters, and it's still growing in the form of DLC. This game is the perfect multiplayer game with so many different ways to play and up to 8 players at once. Out of the characters, my main is still Kirby, staying over from Smash 4 with Mario, Young Link, and Isabel being my other mains. While Kirby's pretty bad in this game, he's still able to compete with some of the best like Joker, which is another reason why I love Ultimate. It's the most balanced Smash game by far. Sure, some characters are still better than others, but there's no Meta Knight or Bayonetta for this game. Everyone is on a fairly even playing field. Speaking of playing field, man, the stage selection in this game is huge as well. It has over 100 stages. My favorites include pretty much all the Mario stages, and Picto Chat too, because of a certain song you can play on it. I mostly play on Final Destination stages, as I feel like those are the most fun for me, but some of the other ones can be fun as well. Well, yes, this game does have a ton of old returning characters, there's still a bunch of new characters like Isabel, and the highly requested King K. Roll, Ridley, and Banjo-Kazooie. They even have some random characters like Piranha Plant and Sans. These characters are still coming as well, so we may even get more hype choices like Steve from Minecraft. The build-up to the next character is always one of the most fun parts about Smash, so I'm happy I'll be able to be part of the biggest Smash hype cycle since the start. But with all this game does good, there is one thing, one person in this game that is missing. He doesn't even have a spirit. He doesn't even make any appearance. Where is my boy? No. Our boy, Dry Bones. Let's get Dry Bones into Smash whether it be by a spirit or even better, a playable fighter. 
He's my most wanted character by far, and if a piranha plant can get in, so can dry bones. Finally, at the number two spot, we have our first non-Nintendo game. Minecraft is truly an incredible game. I've been playing consistently since 2012, even when everyone was hating on it for some reason. This game allows for full control over what you want to do. Do you want to build with no limits? Go creative mode. Do you want to battle it out with or against other players? Go onto a server. However, my favorite way to play is survival with friends and other players. It's so satisfying to see you and your base go from nothing to whatever you want. I love building houses or building complex contraptions and farms using redstone. But anyways, Minecraft is a game that has so many opportunities and ways to play. In fact, it's the game that made me do gaming videos in the first place, which is likely the same for many others as well. I used to be a pure Minecraft channel until I decided to switch over to Nintendo content. I'm not going to talk much about this game since you've probably heard so much from other people and you've likely played it yourself. My love for this game is never ending, and even if I may take long breaks from it sometimes, like a month or two, I'll always come back to it, because it's such a fun time to just sit down and play. Before we get into the number one spot, I want to give four honorable mentions. Two games, Super Mario Maker and Smash for Wii U, would have both been on this list, had their sequels not really made them obsolete. Another goes to a game that I'm sure will make this list in the future, being Animal Crossing New Horizons. However, it isn't out yet, so I obviously can't put it here. Finally, what I would consider 11th place is LEGO Star Wars The Complete Saga. It was one of my favorites back on the Wii, and I love LEGOs and Star Wars, so it's a perfect combo. With the new LEGO Star Wars The Skywalker Saga coming next year, maybe it will be able to crack the top 10. But with that being said, let's hop into number 1. Now, if you haven't guessed what number one is by now, I... I really don't know what to tell you. It's, of course, Super Mario Odyssey. It's impossible for me to explain in this short video why I fully love this game. In fact, I was planning on making a short half-hour retrospective about this game. Maybe at some point I'll be able to get around to that. Nearly everything in this game is perfect. The controls and movement are by far the best out of any game I've ever played. There is so much Mario can do with his jumps, triple jumps, long jumps, and more. Combining these movements with Cappy just makes this game so much fun to run around in. I've seriously spent hours in this game, after 100% completing it, just running around and seeing what tricky jumps I can make or challenging things I can do. In other Mario games, these jumps would not be possible, or nearly as fun to do, and it'd be less fun to just run around. However, here, Mario is so agile, he can make pretty much anything you'd want to. There's a reason this game is so fun to speedrun. The collectibles, the moons, are also perfect. Instead of kicking you out of the level, it just drops Mario back in, ready to collect the next one. The sheer amount of moons in this game is also incredible, totaling well over 800. Nearly every moon is fun and satisfying to collect. Each moon also has a different way to collect it, making each playthrough different. That's the reason this moon here in the Wooded Kingdom is actually one of my favorites in the game. Now normally the player is supposed to use a Sherm to collect it. However, due to how the level is designed, you can also use a Glideon from the top of the stage to get it. Which is actually what I did the first time around. Fun fact actually, I also for this video was able to do it captureless, which was also another fun challenge to do. Speaking of the levels, all of them, and I mean all of them, are pretty great. Sure, Cloud and Ruined are a bit too short, but they're still good ideas. I have a hard time choosing my favorite kingdom for this game, as most of them are so good. One second it'll be Metro Kingdom due to its design and verticality. Then maybe the next it'll be Sam Kingdom just due to how huge it is. Maybe it's Wooded Kingdom because of how fun the moons are to collect with the uproots. There are so many great options. However, we haven't even gotten to the main game's mechanic yet. Cappy and the capture mechanics. We already mentioned how he's used perfectly in movement, being able to be jumped on to make larger jumps. However, he is also used to help Mario take control of enemies. This is such a good idea for a Mario game, and allows for even more possibilities in unique scenarios. On top of all the things I mentioned before, one of my favorite things in this game is the sheer amount of secrets in it. If you've played any of my Mario Maker 2 levels, you know that I like to have a ton of secrets, which was inspired by Mario Odyssey. I seriously feel like I find something new every time I play, 
like, just getting footage for this video, I didn't even know that there's, like, a secret small platform that you can stand on inside of the entrance to the moon cave here. And I have 360 hours in this game. I would think I know this game super well, but I find something new every time I boot it up. My two favorite secrets, though, have to come from the Sand Kingdom. There are two spots in the kingdom where you can make a difficult jump to get to a spot that you think you aren't supposed to be. Had it be any other Mario game, you wouldn't be rewarded for this. However, Mario Odyssey rewards these players' explorations with huge piles of coins, which are actually useful in this game due to the shops. Even though one of these jumps completely removed the challenge in one of the sections, they still reward the player anyways, which I absolutely love this game for. I honestly don't think this game would be topped for me anytime soon. Maybe only by a sequel. I haven't even gotten to everything around in this game, like shops, costumes, and each kingdom individually. But I think I should end it here so that it's not too long. But if I haven't convinced you fully yet why this game is so great, this is the first mainline Mario game where you can play as your boy, Dry Bones. It really speaks for itself. But anyways, that's it for this video. I just want to thank all of the people that liked my content and subscribed to me this year. It's been by far my best year on YouTube, where I not only finally hit 1,000 subscribers, but 10,000 as well. I truly can't thank you all enough. If you all enjoyed this video, it'd mean a lot to me if you like and subscribe as well. I can't wait to see where this next year takes us. Thank you all for sticking with me this year, and I hope to see you next year. Bye.